One Southern Kentucky Lake will be a busy place this holiday weekend, but officials are offering words of caution. And President Biden plans to visit Florida tomorrow to see firsthand the damage left behind by Hurricane Idalia. Plus, we are trending warmer for Labor Day weekend. Your full forecast coming up as Mountain News First at Four continues. Mountain News First at Four continues. Lake Cumberland is expected to be very busy this weekend. People are hoping it is also safe. There's been some high profile accidents there, including one deadly one involving teenagers on a jet ski this summer. WYMT's Phil Pendleton spoke to folks about the precautions. There was a tragic accident not far from here at Burnside Island. Two teenage brothers killed when they were on a jet ski that collided with another boat. And Kentucky Fish and Wildlife officers are encouraging everyone to be careful, cautious, and to pay attention when on the lake this busy holiday weekend. That was the worst accident combined, everything total that I've ever I've ever been involved in. Fish and wildlife officers say what happened back in July was very traumatic for everyone. Since then, they have worked other jet ski crashes, including one that resulted in a teenager with serious injuries. People we spoke with on the lake today say they are very well aware of the dangers and say they will be safe and vigilant even as the lake becomes more crowded. Those who patrol the lake are encouraging the same. For everyone to have a safe weekend, you know, look out for each other, uh, have a have a sense of what's going on around you and uh, beware of other boaters. And fish and wildlife officers say, of course, do not mix alcohol and boating. They say that if you are caught under the influence of alcohol while you're operating a boat that you could be cited, you may even be arrested. In Pulaski County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Officers say next weekend could be busy as well with a boat race taking place on Lake Cumberland. Well, the weather stays nice into Labor Day weekend across the mountains as we stay dry under some sunshine, all thanks to high pressure. Here's a live look across the region from Hazard to Jenkins to Moorhead. Also, the London Corbin Airport. We are dry under plenty of sunshine and blue sky, and those temperatures are much warmer than yesterday. We had some 60s and 70s yesterday, but as expected, we are much warmer today in the middle to even upper 80s. 88 for Clay County, also Pulaski County, 86 in London, 82 for Hazard and 83 over in Pikeville at this hour. Up on the radar, we are dry, and that's also going to continue as we close out the work week, all thanks to high pressure. It is Friday, so we have to talk about high school football. If you have any plans to go out to a tailgate this afternoon or into this evening, the forecast is looking fantastic. We had heat delays, we had weather delays last week, but this week we stay dry under plenty of sunshine. Temperatures in the middle to upper 80s, falling off into the upper 70s and lower 80s as we kick the game off later on this evening, but some 90s are possible by Sunday also into Monday of next week. All those details plus your full seven day forecast on the way in just a few minutes. Steve. All right, should be a good evening for everything going on out there. We have a couple of festivals in the region too, so get out there and enjoy it. President Biden will head to Florida tomorrow to survey the damage from Hurricane Idalia as communities throughout Florida's Big Bend region sift through the trail of devastation. The storm is responsible for at least two deaths and one in Georgia, one in Florida. And many people also lost their homes. CBS's Omar Villafranca is in Cedar Key, Florida, which was hit very hard. This is our cottage too. Uh, it's still standing. We're missing a few parts of it. Cedar Key's far away in sits right on the water. A feature owner, Amy Firestein, said is usually a draw for visitors. I have never seen anything like this. But as Hurricane Adalia brought around seven feet of storm surge to the area, the inn's proximity to the ocean left it wrecked, waterlogged, and covered in debris going into what would have been a busy Labor Day weekend. What would your Labor Day look like? <laughs> I'm already full for Labor Day. I just had a, I got up at five o'clock this morning and started sending cancellation emails just to let them know. The small island community has a population of roughly 800 people. Many of their homes are now piles of brick and wood. When you're coming back, what were you expecting? When we saw it on TV, honestly, 
We were worried. Laura Duncan said the hurricane destroyed her restaurant's main entrance, tore through its back stairways, flooded the dining room, and ripped up the floors, which they'd recently replaced. And I never saw the floors below that, so now we were all making fun of how many colored yeah. tiles we had. <laughs> so it's amazing, yes. Like you get a sense of humor. No, well, you have to, you know. Yeah. What are you going to do? Cry? I did that already. <laughs> yeah. The good news is that power is back on in Cedar Key, Florida. At its peak, about a quarter million Floridians were without power, but line crews have been working fast and nonstop, and that number is now well below 100,000 customers without power. Omar Villafranca, CBS News, Cedar Key, Florida. Edalia's effects are now being felt as close as Virginia's coast. Officials in Norfolk have issued a warning about dangerous rip currents on their beaches, beaches and on Virginia Beach. Experts in that area say strong rip currents and high surf are expected to make the water dangerous even for the strongest swimmers. Survivors of the wildfires in Maui are continuing to put their lives back together and Hawaii's governor says some landowners are being exploited during their vulnerability. Hawaii Governor Josh Green says his administration has opened several investigations into people who have allegedly made unsolicited land offers for property in Lahaina. That is against the law in Hawaii right now. We enhance penalties to a year in jail and $5,000 fine if people approach in a predatory way or they approach anyone unsolicited, which I view as predatory at this point. Uh, to sell their property. Authorities say 115 people died in the fires which tore through Lahaina in a matter of hours. About 1,800 homes were destroyed. The town of 12,000 people was home to many who worked in hotels and restaurants in that area. Back here in the mountains, theater companies are coming together to talk about something they believe has been taboo for too long. The Appalachian Center for the Arts is working with Arendelle Theatricals, giving a stage to a play about depression and suicidal thoughts. Every Brilliant Thing dives into a dialogue about the things that make living worthwhile and is currently touring schools in the Big Sandy region. It, we've been doing it at high schools uh, in eastern Kentucky. We're going to keep doing it in high schools. It's been done in high schools in other states um, to basically help people talk about suicide, make it something that you can talk about and ask for help for. Find out more about the production and how it is promoting positivity and spreading suicide prevention coming up at 6. Next here on First at Four, the United Auto Workers Union files a federal complaint against the parent company of General Motors. And the weather is looking fantastic for week three of high school football. Those details coming up after this break.